Hello, my name is Marie Palmer and I'm with the BC Libraries Cooperative. Today I'm going to talk to you about the Live Press service, what it is and how the libraries are making use of it. We'll take a look at a few of the different library websites and the features and see how libraries are customizing the service to meet their needs as well as those of their patrons. So what is Live Press? Essentially it's a service that includes a visually appealing and user-friendly website based on WordPress. We recognize that WordPress uh, for both the front-end users as well as the back-end users is a really user-friendly way of uh, promoting content and updating it regularly. So we give the power to the libraries to manage and update their content. We also provide website hosting as well as training and support for those websites. I'm going to take a look at a couple of different of the li different library websites and I'm going to flip over to my browser now. And we're going to take a look at a few different of the websites just to see what they look like, how they work, and some of the features. So we provide a template with a fairly fixed architecture to organize the content in a user-friendly way for the patrons. But at the same time, we really try to maximize the library's ability to customize their own sites, to make them relevant to their communities, which results in some very unique sites. So right now we're taking a look at the Grand Forks uh, library website. All of the libraries have a chance to work with our, de our designers. So we take the logo of the library and we try to make it very prominent at the top of the website in the header. And then we try to make a background in complementary colors that match the logo and work for the library's brand. And so in this case, Grand Forks chose to have some swirls in the background, lots of different colors that really um, match that, those of their logo. But libraries have control over that, and there's a lot of uh, collaboration between the libraries and the designers. So let's take a look at a couple of the other websites. Here we have the Salt Spring Island Public Library in BC. And instead of this swirly background, they provided an image that they wanted to use as their background image. Some libraries want to go a little bit more minimalistic, and so here we have South Central Regional Library, a library system in Manitoba. And they opted for a very minimalist background color here, which we can also do for the libraries, and several other libraries have chosen to do this. And in this way, it's really focusing the attention on the content of the website, so the slideshow that you see that's moving around, as well as the content below that. So we do work with the libraries quite a bit to customize their designs to suit their needs. At the top of the page, you'll see the library website address, and all of the library websites share a similar uh, website address. They all end with libraries.coop, and depending on their province, they will have a different abbreviation for their province, so in this case we have MB for Manitoba, and then library system name or abbreviation, so we have scrl.mb.libraries.coop. If I go back to Grand Forks, because they are a BC library, we have grandforks.bc.libraries.coop. So I'm going to give a brief tour of the home page of the website and then I'll go into the website and show some of the features within the website. On our home page what we were finding was that some of the top tasks that patrons indicated they went to the website for were to find out the library hours. And so what we did at the very top there is we included the libraries right away at the very top. We've also included the library hours in the very bottom of the page in the footer which is a very standard place to have the hours of operations for an organization. Some libraries, such as South Central Regional Library, chose to have just a link to their branch hours to the footer. And in this case, South Central Regional, because they are made up of several branches, this made a lot more sense rather than putting all of the different library hours at the top of the page. So if I scroll down here, we will see all of the different branch hours and contact information for the South Central Regional Library system. I'm going to flip back over to Grand Forks. One of the other tasks that uh, patrons indicated they went to library websites for was to access their accounts. So we have a very prominent link at the very top of the page directly to their account. And here is an example of where we try to integrate with some of the other services provided by the co-op. This link goes directly into the Sitka catalog. 
And of course, one of the main things that patrons are going to library websites for are to access not just their account, but to actually search for books in the catalog. So we have a search box on the right hand side of all of the headers of the Live Press websites. It defaults to the catalog because that was a more important search for library patrons than the actual website search. But of course, they can choose to search the website as well if they wish. The catalog search goes directly into the catalog. So in this case with Sitka, if you're searching for a title of a book, it will go directly to the Sitka catalog and show the details for that item. We've also included a link to library to go or the OverDrive service. And in this case, what we've found since we've designed the LibPress service is that libraries have recently taken on numerous subscriptions to other types of ebook and audiobook download services. So we have One Click Digital, we have FreeGal, we have all sorts of other um, services that we would like to incorporate in this search box. So that's definitely on our to-do list of upgrading this search box. In the meantime, there are several other ways of promoting those new services, in particular the downloadable ebooks and audiobooks and magazines. And I'll show you how libraries are promoting those services in a couple of minutes. So below the main standard header, we have a navigation menu, and this basically organizes the content within the library website. And within that header menu that we have here, we have drop down menus. And we're making use of something called mega menus. So instead of having a long disorganized list of information in a single drop down menu, we've organized the content in that drop down menu. So it's a little bit more user friendly for the patrons. Underneath that, we have what we have, a slideshow. And the slideshow is a really fun piece um, for the libraries. Both the library managers and the editors of the websites are really enjoying the slideshow, having fun with it. And the patrons are, are also finding that it's really fun and informative. So this is one of the ways that libraries can really update or um, promote some of the services and programs that they have on their website as well as in their libraries. So in this case, on Grand Forks, we have a number of different slides that are showing a lot of different services. What Grand Forks did, I'm taking control now by clicking the back and forth arrows. What Grand Forks did is, is they created all of these slides. And you can use anything as complex as something like Photoshop to create these slides, or as simple as something like Microsoft Paint, um, which is with most Windows computers. So it's very simple to just even upload a photo which captures people's attention and then just redirect them to a different part of your website to get more detailed information. And if you'd like, you can go one step further. So not only just adding a photo, but adding a little bit of text. And in this case, I think that Grand Forks is using a service called Canva, which is a free online graphics software um, tool, which is really fun. And it includes all sorts of background designs, which are really easy to use. So the idea here is just to capture people's attention and send them to a different part of the website for more information. There are lots of examples on our live live press websites about uh, these slideshows and the different things that you can do with them. I'm going to flip over to a different BC library. We have Castlegar here. And you'll notice that they also chose to have swirls in the background, but that these swirls are matching their logo and their colors. So I'm going to take control of this slideshow by clicking the arrows again. And here's an example of a text-only slide. So there are times when a library feels that they don't have the time to actually create a slide and put it up, in which case we have the option to just very simply, very quickly, type in a headline and a couple of lines of text. And then we stylize that so it doesn't look horrible. And it looks uh, captures people's attention, and it gives them the information they need. Also on Castlegar's website, we have a couple of default slides here. So we include default slides for all of the LibPress websites so that there, if there is a library that just doesn't have the time to create their own slides, they're not at a loss. We have about a dozen default slides that are available for the libraries to use. Below the slideshow, we have another area where libraries can promote unique custom content. And here we call these columns here highlights. And any library can put in any kind of content they want in these areas. And it's as simple as editing a page of content. So in our training sessions, we ensure that the libraries know how to update a page and edit the content. And if they can do that, they can certainly um, update the content in these highlights. They can swap highlights in or out. 
and put new information in there at any time. <coughs> so you notice that in a highlight you can include text, you can include images, you can put links on. Here we have a very simple form to sign up for a newsletter. The rightmost column is um, demonstrating a new adult fiction carousel. This is another way of linking and working with the Sitka service. And so this is showing off new items in their fiction collection. Patrons can take control of this carousel and look back and forth at covers. And they can click on an image to view more information about it directly in the Sitka catalog and possibly put a hold on it if they wish. <coughs> Below the highlights area, we have a standard footer, so we include a very simple site map. And as I mentioned, we have the hours of operation, we have contact information, and if libraries wish, they can include a map for their location. I'm going to go into the website now and just show you some of the pages on the inside. So if I pick a page here, this is the Search Our Catalogs page. <coughs> And here we have a very basic page. And on these pages, libraries can choose to put in as much information as, as they'd like. They can edit the content, content at any time. They can uh, add in links. They can add in images, tables of information, whatever they'd like. So here's a very minimalist page, and it's just listing a number of the catalogs. On this page, we also have the option of including boxes of information on the right hand side. We call these widgets, which is the standard WordPress term. So we have widgets that can highlight other services within the library. In this case, Castlegar has chosen to put on a new items carousel on this particular page. And then we have some global widgets, which will show up on all of the pages on the in of, of this website. They have chosen to put um, a link to their Facebook account, which is an image here and a link. But they also have a very standard default text box here, which is redirecting patrons to, <coughs> excuse me, to the online databases page. One of the other things that we have on these websites is an idea, a feature called centralized content. So we recognize that a lot of libraries have similar content that they want to um, display, so information about certain databases or recommended websites or shared services. And so we didn't want libraries to have to recreate the wheel and type everything out. So we have included a number of different kinds of centralized content for various topics. So here's an example. We'll go over to the NELS page, which is another one of the library services offered by the co-op. And this is an accessible books uh, service for people with print disabilities. The content on this page includes an image and it includes some text. All of this content is what we call centralized text. So when the library went to edit this page, we had a little list of items that they could choose from for centralized content, and they just checked the box next to Nels, and the information was automatically put onto this page. The library can add information before or after if they wish, and they can take this content off at any time. We have similar information on other pages of the website. So for example, under the databases page, we have a page for health, medical, and wellness. On this page, we're listing out some of the unique dat library databases, but we're also including recommended websites. The recommended websites in this case are being drawn from a centralized content source. Libraries can choose to take this information off at any time, and they can, of course, add on library, uh, they can add on other website addresses at any time. On the database page, we're also trying to promote local health and medical resources and getting libraries to add in some contact information for other organizations in their community, as well as redirecting patrons back into the catalog to look at the books. So when a patron is accessing health and medical information, not only do they want databases and websites, but we also want to make sure they know about the books and resources in our community. So I'm going to switch back to my PowerPoint slide and just point out at the end, we have various resources for you to access more information. There are a couple of websites that listed up there. Within the BC Libraries Co-op website, there is a group for LibPress where people can find out more and converse about the service. And you can contact me at any time. My email address and phone number are at the bottom of the screen. Thank you.